You know, this video is just gonna prove how powerful YouTube is when it comes to voicing your opinion on stuff in this community, for sure. Um, what I just saw is pretty telling. For You know, it's, it's very telling. And it just shows, man, that, you know, we all can make such a big impact if we all literally get our shit together and talk about the things that are wrong instead of sugarcoating stuff that we know damn well we don't care about okay let's go ahead and get into this what's going on ryan the professional back again another video rgt podcast episode 37 is live on the channel go check it out if you missed it all right without further ado let's get into this man so i saw a debate and I didn't think I would see this debate, but it actually did happen. And I'm a little late to my reply towards this, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to speak my mind about it. <sighs> my homie Young Ye made a video a few weeks back about Fallout 76. And Fallout 76 received quite a bit of hate or has been receiving quite a bit of hate since it's come out. There's even a video that went viral where a dude lashed out at GameStop because he couldn't return his new copy of Fallout 76. He literally destroyed GameStop and walked out in rage. I want my money back. There's nothing that I can do about it. That's just their policy. Like, it won't even come back in as a return to a brand new game. That's when I scan your receipt, it's going to see when this one was bought, and it's going to automatically give you trade credit. I'm going to get how you doing there, sir? Thank you for calling GameStop. This is Brian. How can I help you? Right. But when you look at the situation, and when you look at how people have responded towards that game, you actually have people who legit are defending it. Now, there are fans, I'm pretty sure there are fans who probably do enjoy Fallout 76, but there are other fans who do not enjoy it, and they know there's a problem with it, but they want to sugarcoat it in hopes of either growing YouTube channels or thinking they're going to get partnered in the long run. And that's the problem with a lot of things going on in YouTube. A lot of people act like they cannot speak their mind and be upfront with either the audience or people here on the internet. And it always ends up hurting us in the long run, and the reason why we continue to get uh, games that that are either broken or not finished now in the interview or not the interview but in the debate mr jason schreer who is a you know representative of kotaku i don't follow kotaku i really don't but i'm getting to that in a minute but in you know pretty much the debate to summarize his whole argument with young Ye, he basically said that you know just because we get a whole bunch of good games that pretty much means that we shouldn't talk about the bad games so to speak that's basically a summary of basically his argument when he's going against young Ye and the actual debate and my thing is this so you think it's okay for companies to give you half-assed games, for for companies to literally have pay-to-win shortcuts that pretty much destroy the experience for a lot of people, right? You think that's okay in 2018, going into 2019, right? You 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 think that's okay because we have a small minority in, in terms of like a small group of games that are gems, so to speak. For example, I can name a few. We have Cuphead, which is really well done. We have God of War, which is one of Sony's highest rated games. And of course, you have Red Dead Redemption 2, which recently launched. But you get what I'm saying. You think because we have good games like that, that automatically dismisses what people are complaining about in the gaming community? No, it does not dismiss anything. It doesn't. Now, the reason why I don't follow Kotaku is very simple. The fact that they even monitor their comments the way they pretty much censor people who either have a difference of opinion when it comes to certain things regarding their statements is ridiculous i am not a fan of that whatsoever and i never have been a fan of that i've never been a fan of that and some of you might you know think it's cool i don't i don't think it's cool at all i don't think any developer or i'm sorry any journalist should be monitoring the comments like that and telling you know gamers like oh this is what this is what we say what we say is law right you should not be talking about this even though you spend 60 dollars on this uh game this or 400 dollars on this piece of plastic right you spent this money but you should not be saying this 
Every gamer is entitled to their opinion about something they paid for. Every gamer is entitled to their opinion on something that they clearly see in front of them. And you can clearly have an opinion on something based on looking at it. You can look at every single game that comes out and you automatically know at the snap of a finger like that, that, oh, this game is definitely for me. This game caters to me. When I look at Ghost of Tsushima, Mr. Jason Schreer, that game clearly caters to me. That's the game that I'm looking forward to. When I look at Spider-Man, God of War, The Last of Us Part Two, those games carry to me. When I look at a Gears of War, a Halo or Forza, those games might carry to me. It's all a matter of opinion. I can have an opinion on something. I can have an opinion on something. But for you to call people toxic because they have an opinion on something is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Every gamer is going to speak their mind about whatever is on their mind. If something is bad, they're going to call it out. Nobody should be labeled toxic because they're speaking their mind. No YouTuber should be looked down upon because they're speaking their mind about something. It's the truth. No company should be <laughs> releasing these games in these current states. What happened to the 90s? I mean, I'm pretty sure you gamed in the 90s, did you not, Jason? So I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this format of us getting great games in the 90s. Well, we didn't have this problem. Games were launched in so, you know, with, with so much replayability. We barely have games like that in 2018. We barely have developers with that mindset. Developers don't want to put that much effort into games. Instead, they want to act like it's a to be continued sort of thing, right? Where it's like, okay, here's where we're going to stop at, and the rest we're going to add in DLC, which we're going to charge you $60 for. You know, oh, don't worry, don't worry. We're not gonna charge you $60 up front. It's gonna be $20 per DLC. See what I'm saying? That's what's going on in the community, Jason. And no offense, but I'm just being real with you. For you to label somebody and call them toxic because they're being upfront with their audience and being upfront with this community, that's, <laughs> that's shady, bro. It's shady. Every real YouTuber is going to be upfront with you and how he feels about a piece of plastic, a game, a corrupt um, business model. Every real gamer will be upfront with you from this day forward. They always will be. You know, not every single developer or I'm sorry, YouTuber is going to act like a corporate shield and act like there's no nothing wrong. No, see, the people who act like corporate shields and put on these rose colored sunglasses and paint this, you know, alternate reality that we clearly are not into. They're just doing that for one or two reasons. One for subscribers be uh, two, you know, for attention and three. They want those views. That's all it is. That's what people are doing for. It. That's what a lot of these dudes do. And that's the basic truth. That is the basic truth. And that's how I feel about it, man. That's exactly how I feel about it. You know, I'm not a fan of it at all. And I'd be damned if I let anybody tell me what I should and should not say about a damn uh, piece of plastic or a game. You know, we as gamers have the right to say what we have to say. You know, we have the right to say what's on our minds. And these are games that are launching, you know, that are coming out they're not even you know living up to the hype a good chunk of these games have not lived up to the hype a good chunk of these games have underwhelmed a lot of these games have this gym a lot even games that i didn't even think would underwhelm kind of underwhelmed like for example arkham or um what was it arkham knight underwhelmed a lot of us but yet oh we we can't talk about that right jason because we had good ones in arkham city and arkham asylum right no we have a right to speak our mind about whatever's on our mind, Jason. And we will talk about what's on our minds. And that's the facts. It's the facts. And you know, I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know where y'all get this mentality where you think we, you know, all gamers should be censored, but um, no. No. Not all gamers should be censored at all. All gamers should have the right to their opinion. And they should have the right to their opinion. So, that's how I feel on it for sure. All right? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what else to say. I really don't know what else to say. The fact that anybody thinks it's wrong for us to speak our opinion of video games, or uh, you know, things that we spend our money on, our hard earned money on, the fact that people think that we should not have an opinion or have you know, should not you know, share our opinions basically about you know, stuff that we have because it creates a toxic world and all this crap is ridiculous. You know, did it ever once occur to you, Jason, that we wouldn't have a toxic world if these developers actually had standards? high standards for games did it ever occur to you that no of course not of course not never that never occurred to you right that never occurred to you that we probably would have higher standards we would have better games if these developers actually had higher standards so from what i from what i've seen from these developers 
especially like Square Enix and a few others, there's only a few that have high standards. It's only a few. And most of those, you know, few are first party studios that are owned by one platform. Sad the true. Sad but true. A lot of these third party developers don't have high standards aside from Rockstar. And uh, I'll, let, I'll leave you with that. I'll leave you with that. Since you think it's a bad idea or you think it's bad for people, I'll leave that for you, okay? If you guys liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you liked the video, for sure. Hit the bell icon. Stay up to date for all news, rumors, and everything of that nature here on this channel. Without further ado, I'm Ryan the Professional. You guys be easy, be safe, be blessed. And I'll see you guys later. I'm out.